Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining today. We started this journey towards uh, unraveling different um, products available for export, both raw materials, solid minerals, and finished goods for export from Nigeria. So thank you for joining. I'm hoping it's going to be another interesting section this evening. Today, we are moving on from cocoa. And in discussion on cashew, we are looking at different issues and nuances around cashew nut export. If you are joining us for the first time and you would like to gain access to other valuable materials and resources that might be of interest to you, please visit our YouTube channel, Global Trade Tutor and Voice of African Trade. Like, share, drop your comment, and remember to click on the notification bell. So we're looking at cashew nut now. We are looking at raw cashew nut. We are still going to have a session on cashew kernel, the product. Raw cashew nut, also known as cashew nut, in shell, a seed of cashew apple, which grows on cashew tree. The cashew nut is actually the kidney-shaped seed that hung below the apple. The nut is surrounded by a hard, inedible shell that contain a toxic resin called urosol, or you sure, sure, rather, right which can cause skin irritation in some people. The cashew nut itself is delicious and nutritious food that is good source of protein, healthy fat, essential mineral. Cashew nuts are often roasted or salted before being eaten. Over the weekend, I heard the news of a frontline construction company in Nigeria exporting roasted packaged cashew nuts. 90% of their production, more than 90%, is being exported. A construction company. Because they do a lot of import and they need forex. And they're getting frustrated with the Nigerian business environment. They have to find a solution. This should be a lesson for every importer who wants to do sustainable business, particularly in this economy. This three crop of considerable economic importance to Nigeria and other, and other tropical country, a good source of useful product and byproduct, of course. In Nigeria, the harvest season starts in February, March. The entire harvest period occupies about 16 weeks, February, March, April, May. In the east and western part of the country where cashew nuts are, not, uh, are grown, not are uh, allowed to drop to the ground before they are collected. If you are looking for where to get in Nigeria, from Enugu to Abia to Imo to Anambra to Eboin to Cross River, in eastern part of the country, in west, Oshun Oyo Ondo Egiti Ogu, and in the north, Kwara Kogi Nazarawa Benre Taraba Niger FCT. But by the way, many book prefer the quality of cashew nut from Ogumosho. <laughs> So there is something peculiar about the quality there. So you will see in some export contract, they will say Ogomosho Cashew. It is a popular location with very good quality cashew. Jumbo nut, actually. Quality specification, a very important part of this conversation. According to SGS Quality Inspector, standard cashew nut on shell should have the following specification. Not count between 180 to 200. The lower the not count, the better the quality. Moisture between 8 and 10%. The lower the moisture, the better the quality. So it will be growing in transit to destination. Defective non, 15% max. Admixture, 0.25% max. Kennel output ratio, 40 to 50 pounds per bag. Usually the bag is about 80 kg bag. So if you are trying to export, be conscious of this nut count. If you put a, a 1 kg of cashew, pour it on a scale, it weighs 1 kg. Take it out. If you count it, the number of nuts is between 180 and 200. A good nut, actually some people consider 190 and above not to be good enough. Now, the beauty of commodity like this is that even when it is higher, they will still buy. 
it will just discount the price and you must be conscious of that cashew nut cashew nut or raw cashew nut are good source of protein important for building and repairing tissues good source of healthy fat can help to lower cholesterol level they are good source of essential minerals like magnesium copper and manganese they are a good source of dietary fiber which can help to promote gut health and regularity and they are good source of antioxidant which can protect cells from damages let's look at the potential market size of cashew nut who are those that buy the major demand for cashew nut is from asia 4.29 billion and by the way the total demand is about 7.66 billion dollars total demand asia alone is taking more than half of that asia alone followed by africa 99 million south american demand 27.5 million dollars european demand 1.83 billion north american demand 1.29 billion dollars oceania demand 120 million dollars so let's look at the major buyers vietnam india china are major buyers and they buy raw cashew nuts there's also demand in the united states in germany in netherlands major buyers of this product who are your competitors in africa ghana Cote d'Ivoire, Tanzania, Benin Republic. The major shipment from India and Vietnam are the processed cashew cannon. In 2022, Vietnam still lead with 2.29 billion demand, like half of the raw cashew nut. India 1.8, Brazil 15 million. Let's move on. Packaging. Packaging is very very important. Raw cashew nut in shell are typically packed in bags or sack for shipment to export market. The packaging process involves several steps to ensure protection and preservation of the nut during transit. Choose sturdy durable bags made of material suitable for transporting raw cashew nuts. Common option include jute bag, PP bag. Jute bag is a lot better If you are using PP bag, it must be very dry. But jute bag is a lot better. Bag preparation: inspect the bag for any defect or damage. Ensure the bag are clean, dry, free of contaminants. Inspect the bag of any defect. Check for proper stitching, sealing, prevents spillage or leakage. Fill the bag with raw cashew nut in shell, ensuring even distribution and proper weight balance. Avoid overfilling. the bag to prevent busting or tearing you know cashew nut is very strong and if the bag is too tight it can tear weighing and sealing weigh each fill bag to ensure compliance with weight specification and regulation seal the bag securely using stitching heat sealing or tying methods or tying method rather to prevent tampering and maintain freshness Regarding the capacity, as for the capacity of 20 foot container for shipping raw cashew nuts in shell, it depends on the various factors, as the size and weight of the bag, the packing configuration, and loading method. All of them influence how many tons can fit a container. Typically, a 20 foot container can accommodate approximately 18 to 22 metric tons of raw cashew nuts in shell, depending on the density. and packaging efficiency the number of bags that fit into 20 foot container can vary based on bag size packing density as a rough estimate for standard size bag of 50 kg approximately 360 to 400 bags can fit 20 foot container for larger bag of bulk packing the number of bags will definitely be fewer It's essential to optimize packing density and loading configuration to maximize container capacity while ensuring proper weight distribution and stability during transit. Working with experienced logistics partner and adhering to international shipping standard can help 
optimize packaging and loading process. Packing or packaging rock astronaut in shell for export require careful attention. Harvesting and collection. Harvest cashew nut at the right maturity stage, it should fall by itself. That is better when it falls by itself rather than going to pluck it. Collect them carefully to avoid damage to the nut and the outer shell. If there is any damage on the body, it can affect the content, making it spotted, and that can reduce the kernel output ratio. And the KOR is a very important factor in quality specification. Clean and drying, thoroughly clean the cashew nut to remove dirt and foreign particles. Allow them to dry naturally using or using drying equipment to achieve appropriate moisture content for storage, at least not more than 8 to 9 percent, max 10. I recommend 8. If you're an exporter, you need to be careful when you're buying raw cashew nuts. You know, because you're going to buy based on weight. A number of farmers don't want to dry it very well because it's a game of, game of weight. One of the ways you can know if cashew nut is dry, if you pick up the raw cashew nut, if you put it on your index finger and use the nail of your thumb to press it against your index finger. Let your nail depress the skin. If it's able to depress, it's not dry. If it is dry, if you use your nail on it and you depress it, it will not depress. The skin will not depress, at least not to the level that will preserve it in transit to the destination. Sort, quality sorting. Sort the cashew nut based on size, color, and quality. Uniformity is essential for creating standardized bag. Jumbo nuts separate them from the others because you're going to be able to sell it at a good price. The big nuts that have nut count of about 170 per kg. Packaging material. Use high quality, clean, and food grade packaging material. Jute bags are commonly used for packing cashew nuts in shell. Airtight sealing. Seal the, air, the bag airtight. To protect the cashew nut from moisture, pest, and contaminants. Proper sealing help maintain product quality during storage, particularly during shipping. Store pack cashew nut in a cool, dry place with good ventilation to prevent mold. Avoid direct contact with the wall or the floor. So if you put it in the warehouse, cartons on the floor. And when you are stacking it, ensure it's not in contact with the floor and it's not in contact with the wall. And when you are shipping it out, use first thing first out. That means the first to come in is the first to go out. Following this guideline, exporter can ensure that raw cashew nuts in shell are packaged to preserve quality, meet international standards, comply with regulatory requirements for successful export transactions. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about paperwork, Processes, purchaser, pricing, and the pitfall to avoid in exporting raw cash notes. John, a determined entrepreneur, desired to go into export business but was clueless about the process. He was introduced to Export Hack, a comprehensive and product-specific online course for mastering export of agro-commodities, processed foods, solid minerals, and manufactured goods. John immediately bought the export hack for product of his choice at 100,000 Naira per product and voraciously learned about the specifications, packaging, documentation, market potential, pitfalls, pricing, risk mitigation, and strategies for securing buyers abroad. Through export hacks guidance, John boosted his export skills and became a proficient exporter. With the newfound expertise, he navigated the challenging landscape and successfully avoided common pitfalls in export business. Today, John stands as a master in exports business, a testament to his perseverance and invaluable lessons from the export hack. To buy the export hack for your product of choice visit globaltradecollege.com or call 0809200424, 0809200424. Let's move on to paperwork. Paperwork. Now, if you are exporting cash out, of course the buyer, there are mandatory documents, which include commercial invoice detailing the price, total uh, value, unit price, description, quantity, and the like. Also, packing list, 
itemizing the way you pack. Now I showed you just now what quantity fit a container. What quantity fit a container. So when you're buying, you have an idea of how many tons, 17, 18, 19, or even 20 tons, depending on the size of the bags and the way you optimize the way the good is loaded into the container. That's what you put in packing list. Of course, if you are shipping by sea, you will need a bill of lading. It specifies the origin, it specifies the destination, consigning freight charge. This is a transport document. Evidencing the good. Okay. Certificate of origin issued by a competent authority. In Nigeria, it is issued by Nasima. Certifying the country where the raw cashew nut is grown and processed. Phytosan certificate. In Nigeria, Phytosan certificate is issued by Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service. This is also a required document for export of cashew nut. Then, export declaration. That is your NXP. That is the NSP for you are filling for export. In other countries, they are called different names. In Nigeria, it's called the Nigeria Export Proceed Form. Inspection certificate issued by an independent inspector verifying the quality and quality of raw cashew nut against agree upon specification. Fumigian certificate required by some countries, not all countries, some country. If fumigation treatment was applied to raw cashew nut. Letter of credit, if your transaction is for letter of credit, and all other relevant permits. That inspection certificate is very important. Most contracts will have it because that's what tells the buyer the quality of what has been shipped and determine the payment expected afterwards. Remember, the documents are accurate, are complete, ensure documents are free of errors. Timely preparation because you need to prepare it well ahead to be able to deliver it before the latest date of presentation. There are other country-specific requirements. Check your contract to know what that country requires. And you might need a professional guidance, and we are available to help you through that process. If you are exporting from Nigeria, you need NXP, Proforma Invoice, Export License from NDPC. You need to be registered with CAC, and then Nigerian Export Proceed Export Supervision Scheme, you pay the next fee and get the certificate. You also have single good declaration issued by custom and clear certificate of inspection issued by the inspection agent. The shipping document, bill of lading invoice and packing list, and of course, Pakistani certificate, fumigation certificate, and certificate of origin, depending on where it's going. Next is the process. The process. Look at the process. For export, cash you know, you need to be prepared. Preparation involves export readiness. The inspection certificate is CCI, issued by PIA. Now, no, no, no. Let me explain that. There are two inspection certificates. The CCI is not recognized by the buyer. It's a Nigerian document. It's a regulatory requirement by the Nigerian government. The inspection certificate of the buyer is issued by either FGS, Biri Veritas. So there are two pre-shipment inspections. One on behalf of the government, and that's the one narrowly we issue CCI for, and the second on behalf of the buyer, because the buyer does not recognize CCI. The federal government will need to find a way to work with different countries around the world to make CCI acceptable. But the way CCI is done right now is not acceptable because they don't really do quality specification as the buyer expected it. Preparation. Preparation is very important. Look, when you say you are looking for buyer, <clears throat> when you say you are looking for buyer, and you, are, you need to promote, and you don't know how to go about promotion, it's a sign of lack of adequate preparation. When preparation is done correctly, you will know exactly what to do to promote, and then you'll be able to get the purchase order <clears throat> where you will negotiate your pricing. When you have a purchase order and pricing agree, you can procure or produce. In the case of cash note, most likely you are procuring. Ensure the product is packaged and labeled. You do your pre-export documentation, like I've shown you before. Port clearance and inspection is done here in Nigeria, port of origin. 
post export documentation is done like i've shown you before port to port shipment happen after that presentation of document is done at destination port clearance and inspection is done and payment is made please note sometimes sometimes some buyer will have paid some advance before good arrive that's why they need a bill of lading evidence that you have shipped the goods so that they can pay before arrival upon arrival they can then pay balance after this second leg of inspection for many commodities including cashew nut there is possibility of variation in quality and quantity from loading to destination at this point if it's higher or lower that will be determined by an inspection agent you should specify in your contract the buyer should not be the one to do this inspection himself a third party like sgs should do it and send a report to you and that will be the basis for final quality inspection you need a rep to also supervise that to ensure you are not being cheated at destination market before payment is made purchaser you need purchaser you need purchaser you need to promote promote on social media on instagram facebook linkedin youtube you want to learn how to do this get the eureka pack get the eureka pack if you get the export hack you will also get to know the protocol to follow when you are doing this b2b trade portal it's another place where you and there's so many of them where you can promote you can buy data from database companies database companies can sell data of importer in the buyer's country to you but like i often say don't make those calls yourself remember just because you are africa you are frost down to you prove otherwise get someone that they can trust when they begin to have conversation in order to minimize the chance in fact when the buyer knows that your rep is in that country and your rep call you reduce the chance of fraud however if you are shipping by air, ensure that your shipment, if you are dealing with a buyer for the first time, even second time, if you are shipping by air, ensure your shipment go to your buyer, sorry, to your rep, who will deliver to the buyer and collect payment. International trade fair. You can attend international trade fair. It's expensive with dollar now. Cost is expensive. Transport, accommodation, and the like. Very expensive. There are a lot of fraudulent buyers, so beware. <laughs> Very correct. There are partners. You know, one of the easiest ways to get buyers, you will still use other methods, but you see this partner will be able to help you close the sale. When you are promoted and there is interest, your rep can easily make it easier to close the sale. So you don't be among the statistics of people that say, I got buyers, I've been calling. They are not picking my call. They are not responding to me. Different stories and concerns here and there. You can avoid all those challenges and headaches by just having someone at destination that can speak for you. You need to get a copy of Eureka Pack if you don't have one already to learn how to get buyers abroad. Eureka Pack help you, show you how to get prepared to get buyers, get online tools to deploy in getting buyer abroad, Get the list of market with demand for, pro for your product. Get the list of importer in that market. Get the contact of importers in that market. Get the export contract from the contact detail of the importer. And of course, get favorable contract terms. Let's move on to pricing. Very important, pricing. Now, what I would do here is to give you the pricing uh, profile. I won't be able to give you an exact figure because the price changed from week to week. It's already over a million right now. It changed from week to week. So I'm able to give you some figure, like transport, for example, that de depends on where you are coming from. The product price depends on where you are buying, quantity you are buying, and the quality you are buying. But some other prices are, are cost are fixed. If you slot them into other costs, you can arrive at a good costing and pricing. Product cost depends on the product, Transport depend on the warehouse. Transport to, to warehouse depend on the distance. Every commodity must go to a warehouse for inspection, 
please ensure your commodity is inspected in the warehouse. Ensure everything is in order before you load into the container. Warehousing, 10 to 40,000, 10 to 50,000 per metric ton for one to four weeks, depending on the location. Transport to port, depending on the carrier, the product, and of course the destination. Freight forwarder, about 150 to 250 per container. Uh, shipping line local charges, 30 to 40,000 per container. Freight charge depending on the carrier, the product, and of course the destination. NSP fee is about 8,000 with VAT. Nest fee is about 0.5% of the O4B. Logistic fee is about 30,000 to 50,000. Logistic fee is, oh wow, boys, legally, legal fee. What you pay the guys on the road. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Terminal handling charge, 80 to 120,000 per container. Marine insurance fee, please do insurance for your shipment, 0.4 to 0.8% of the invoice value. Inspection fee, 100 to 120,000 per container. Certificate of origin, 12,000 to 20,000 per shipment. Fumigation fee by the agency, personal entry determined by the agency of government, and interest rate determined by your bank. Or whatever source you are getting your money from, you can see that some costs will definitely not be incurred because you don't, uh, you are not taking a loan. Pitfall, a big and important area. The issues. If people are going to lose money, this is where the issues are. Issues. Common quality issue with raw cash on can impact their marketability and processing into cash canal. Here are some of the common quality issues and potential measures. To combat them. Issues like mold and fungus, improper drying and storage condition can lead to growth of mold and fungus on the cashew nut. That made the cashew nut spotted. Someone says pallet required. I will strongly recommend you use pallet. Some people use carton. Some people use brown paper, like the picture I showed you. But my recommendation, use a pallet. You can use paper for the side. But if you can put wooden pallet on the floor, that would be great. And shop about drying. If mold is growing on the body, on the skin of the, of the, of the shell of the cashew nut, it can get inside and make the cashew nut become spotted. That would reduce the kill out. Ensure proper drying of cashew nut before storage. Maintain appropriate humidity level and store in well ventilated dry condition. In Insect infestation. Insect issue. Insect properly, particularly during storage. During storage. Insect, particularly during storage, can damage cash nuts and lead to quality deterioration. Quality deterioration. Quality deterioration. Implement effective pest control. One of the reasons why you do the fumigation. Not your regular fumigation, not your regular fumigation. There's a way FPIS does it. They don't use a fluid chemical, they use tablets. That can help you avoid pests. Implement effective pest control measures during cultivation processing, particularly storage. Use proper storage facility and practices to prevent insects. Moisture, the real deal. High moisture content can lead to mold growth, affecting quality of cashew nuts. High moisture content can lead to mold growth, affecting the quality of the cashew nut. Implement proper drying techniques. I've shown you the very easy way to detect if the cashew nut is dry. So you can actually do a spot check on the level of dryness of the cashew nut before you buy. Because this moisture thing is a big issue that can damage the whole plan and arrangement you have as a business if it's not well taken care of. Proper drying techniques, including sun drying. Sun drying. Actually, it's recommended that you should do sun drying as much as possible. Sun drying is effective, and if the sun is up very well, you shouldn't have issues. Sun drying is very, very effective. So I would recommend you consider doing sun drying rather than using machine. To reduce moisture content, 
per acceptable level. And acceptable level in this case about, I would recommend 8%. You know, the lower, I know is a game of weight, but the lower the moisture, the better you are. So you want to ensure you implement that as much as possible. You want to ensure you implement that as much as possible. Foreign matter and contamination. Foreign matter and contamination. Another very, very important area. Purity level needs to be very high. Purity level needs to be very, very high. Presence of stone, debris, other foreign matter can occur during harvesting and processing. Implement thorough sorting and cleaning process during post-harvest handling and processing to remove foreign material. Poor kennel quality. You see that mold growth is what is creating this poor kennel quality. That moisture causing mold is what creating this kennel quality. The quality of cashew kennel may be compromised due to factor like poor processing method or improper storing. Ensure proper processing techniques, including roasting, shelling, to maintain integrity of the cashew, cashew kernel. But in this case, cashew nut drying is a good way to maintain the integrity of the kernel inside. Physical damage. Physical damage during harvesting, transportation, processing can lead to reduced quality. Handle cashew nut with care. Cashew nut is not very expensive. You need to handle it with care. During harvesting and processing, and use appropriate packaging and transportation methods to prevent physical damage. Variability in not count in, in uh, not size. I said it before, you need to sort. Inconsistency in not size affect processing efficiency and product uniformity. Train farmers to optimize harvesting practices to ensure uniform size. You should sort. If what you're buying is not sorted, you should sort to minimize different differences aflatoxin contamination you know when we get to product like ginger granite a number of other products you will see issue with this aflatoxin it's a big issue aflatoxin produced by certain mold can contaminate cashew nut and pose health risk if the mold, if mold grow on it it can become infected or contaminated with aflatoxin Implement good agricultural practice to prevent mold growth. Include proper drying. The way to stop this mold is drying. Proper drying and storage, and of course, pest control. Regularly test for aflatoxin level. Poor storage condition. Inadequate storage, such as exposure to moisture, can lead to quality deterioration. Mitigation. Store cashew nut in well ventilated, dry environment. With control humidity, use appropriate packaging material to protect against environmental factors. Environmental factors. Harvesting practice. Untrained and improper farming, a harvesting practice can lead to damage to the cashew nut. So these are the things you have to look out for before you buy. If the cashew nut is already damaged, of course you don't want to buy that. Train farmer for best practices for farming, for harvesting, including use of appropriate tools and techniques to minimize damage. Ethical and social concern. Issues related with fair labor practice, wage, ethical consideration can impact the overall sustainability of cashew support and engage in initiative promoting fair trade practices, ethical labor standards, and sustainable cashew farming. This ethical ESG generally. ESG generally. Ethical and sustainable governance. Sustainability in governance. It's a big deal, a big deal that needs to be considered going forward. As the volume grows, you need to consider that. Addressing this quality issue requires collaboration along the entire cash supply chain, from farmers to the processors to the exporters. Implement and adhere to good agricultural practices. Quality control measures and ethical standards are crucial for ensuring the production and quality of high quality cashew nut. High quality cashew nut. John, a determined entrepreneur, desired to go into export business but was clueless about the process. He was introduced to Export Hack, a comprehensive and product-specific online course for mastering export of agro-commodities, processed foods, solid minerals and manufactured goods. 
John immediately bought the export hack for product of his choice at 100,000 Naira per product and voraciously learned about the specifications, packaging, documentation, market potential, pitfalls, pricing, risk mitigation, and strategies for securing buyers abroad. Through export hacks guidance, John boosted his export skills and became a proficient exporter. With the newfound expertise, he navigated the challenging landscape and successfully avoided common pitfalls in export business. Today, John stands as a master in exports business, a testament to his perseverance and invaluable lessons from the export hack. To buy the export hack for your product of choice, visit globaltradecollege.com or call 08092000424. 08092000424. The export hack contains 82 different products. You can choose the product of your choice. Each product or each uh product yeah contain preparation for export product quality specification product potential paperwork intricacy purchase order detail all that you have in this course plus protocol on how to get buyer plus pointers to export readiness plus preparation for export plus purchase order detail all together bundled together in what we call the export hack and you have it for 82 different product and you can choose the product of your choice you can also join us on our youtube channel every every day monday to friday there is always a video short video educating you on export subscribe like share global trade tutor and voice of african trade